thousand ounce producers today trade, you know, roughly, uh, you know, the range from, you know, 300 million up to 2 billion, depending yeah. on who you are. So there is a wide range. Uh, and we're, we're obviously not even close to that today. No. You know, yeah. it would take a four X for us to get to that. And yet we're funded for that. So mm-hmm. it's a huge deal. We bring that online because it's, it's a strong amount of co- cash flow. It's, it's, it's a relevant production number and a relevant mm-hmm. life of mine. Today with me is Anil Warich, Executive Vice President of Step Gold, trading on the TSX under symbol STGO. Anil, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me, Sunil. Great. You're one of the founders of Step Gold, and now you know you are Mongolia's latest gold producer, wrapping up to 100,000 ounces a year. What was your vision when you started this company a decade ago? Yeah, so back in 2016, the company was actually founded in Mongolia with uh, my other two partners, uh, Bata Tumar Osher, who's now the chairman and CEO, who's a, a local Mongolian and our, our boots on the ground and really runs the show down there. And Matt Wood, uh, who's an exploration geologist, who both of them have worked together in Mongolia since 2009, have built the company and sold it for half a billion in 2011. So in 2016, I was working with Matt on another project, uh, advising him as a banker, and uh, he he said he wanted to go back to Mongolia and build a premier precious metals company focused on Mongolia, where you know this is a resource-rich country, home to world-class discoveries and assets already, or mines with the with the Oyotoko mine operated by Rio Tinto, and relatively undiscovered, with only one percent, uh, you know, exploited. Uh, so great opportunity for the geology that. Uh, you know, lends itself to epithermal gold deposits like the one we have. And the goal was to build uh, a precious metals company focused on Mongolia, uh, which we've have, we've actually done uh, today. So it's it's been a great journey so far. Uh, a lot of, lot of bumps in the road, like any miner, uh, but mm-hmm. the global issues have certainly also impacted us. Yeah, you mentioned Oil Togo. So Oil Togo, like, how would you compare yourself to someone like an Oil Togo? Oh, we're we're much smaller. Just to be clear, yeah. I mean it's a world class discovery and and mine operated by Rio Tinto that now employs I think fifteen thousand locals, sixteen thousand mm-hmm. total, um, and and a, and a copper mine that will go on for probably a hundred plus years. So mm-hmm. we're not there yet, mm-hmm. uh, but it certainly shows you that you can build world class mm-hmm. assets, employ locals, and work with the government to build something. And and for us. We started local, uh, as you can imagine. Ninety-nine uh, percent uh, of our, our our workforce of almost three hundred fifty people are local, uh, half our board are local, and and, and our CEO and, and and now chairman are, are also uh, Mongolian. So you know th- that's a difference I think between them and us is we are considered a, a Mongolian uh, gold producer listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and we do things properly. We know how to execute in country. We've created a lot of direct and indirect jobs and education and, and the benefits uh, to the locals, but we're certainly much, much smaller, but our aspirations yeah. are to get bigger. And mm-hmm. the way to do it, no pun intended, is step by step. And we started small with an asset from another mid-tier, Santera Gold. Mm-hmm. And uh, we ended up building that project. It was a Greenfield project in 2017 when we acquired it, mm-hmm. uh, raised money from a lot of uh, Western blue chip investors and their mm-hmm. backers uh, and uh, brought that online successfully in 2020. So very quickly we moved. Uh, without uh, any major uh, disruptions. For sure. Yeah, I mean, right now you guys are sitting at about 30,000 ounces a year, um, which is part of the phase one. And and you guys plan on wrapping up to 100,000 ounces a year, which is, like you said, step by step, getting there to that world-class level. Um, How do you see yourself comparing with other companies that are producing around that 100,000 ounces a year? Yeah, so I think firstly, the the 30,000 ounces, I know it's not sexy to the market but it does it gets you it gets you in the game we're, we're established we were able to successfully bring it online commercially profitably create jobs become an employer a taxpayer a royalty payer have that infrastructure to grow very quickly to basically allow for a seamless uh expansion to that phase two over the next uh 18 to 24 months so um you know getting into the hundred thousand ounce producing is is a, is a is a big deal because we have mm-hmm. over 10 years of mine life uh it's 12 years today and that's growing so that becomes more relevant to investors and, and even other other mining companies uh, who are looking for projects uh no one's looking for a thirty thousand ounce producer that that produces for only three or four years but bottom line is we use that cash flow and that success to grow uh, our asset on the same same footprint so hundred thousand ounce producers today trade 
you know, roughly, uh, you know, the range from, you know, 300 million up to 2 billion, depending yeah. on who you are. So there is a wide range. Uh, and we're, we're obviously not even close to that today. No. You know, yeah. it takes a four X for us to get to that. And yet we're funded for that. So mm-hmm. it's a huge deal. We bring that online because it's, it's a strong amount of co- cash flow. It's, it's, it's a relevant production number and a relevant mm-hmm. life of mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a major de-risking um, catalyst for you guys when you guys announced that $150 million um, financing. What, can you walk us through that and what that means for the company? Yeah, that, so firstly, in this market, it's a, it's a, it's a major win and coup mm-hmm. for ourselves and our investors uh, and a testament to our team uh, who, who were able to uh, pull that off as well. Obviously, we have a strong team that uh, has been working on this for for the last couple of years, you know, we 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 talk to every every financial partner that exists in the world, I'd say, or, or the, the buckets, the private equities to the banks that have exposure to Mongolia. And, and we got a made in Mongolia uh, package, one and done package that's very equity friendly. I mean, uh, unbelievably equity friendly. So in a normal project financing facility, I would say, I would say you, you have to raise about 30 percent of equity uh, mm-hmm. and that's massively dilutive levels and valuations. It, it, would, it would be bad. And, and I mean, that's speaks to the alignment we have with our investors. We, we as a board of management own 20% of the company today and, and have never sold a share since being public for five and a half years. So we, we do everything we can to mitigate um, dilution. And that this, this is what this package allowed us to do is 150 million US of debt, all debt mm-hmm. uh, in three tranches of 50 million US. Uh, we announced it in July. And, and, you know, I think we created some liquidity for investors that, you know, everyone, it's nothing about the, Explain to to everyone in the market today that we created liquidity for for other investors uh, on mm-hmm. all good news. But bottom line is it's an equity friendly deal, three tranches of fifty million. We've already drawn down on uh, circa the first ten million US just a few weeks ago to show mm-hmm. both of the market that it's it's real real capital available to us, mm-hmm. and we'll pay. You know that's always the one thing, right? When is it going to be available, if ever? Yeah, uh, and here we've shown that, and it's allowed us to 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 move phase two forward over this winter, uh, start more expansion, the final design and engineering work on the remaining construction. We've mm-hmm. already started construction. We actually built our phase two crusher fixed crushing circuit in the last eighteen months, so that's actually installed and will be operational later this year uh, by the end of this quarter. So that's a that's a one major item, but mm-hmm. uh, it shows the progress. It shows that the capital is there available to us. And more importantly, the the the, the terms were were fantastic. Uh, you know, interest only payments on what you draw uh, mm-hmm. until we commission the mine, and so that's circa 2026 would be about six months post commissioning of the mine is when we start paying back principal and interest. And you know, for investors, the the rough math, you know, we're going to produce 100,000 ounces at about a thousand dollar margin at today's today's gold price. So yeah. the payback You're doubling your money. Yeah, it's, it's a quick what? payback. Quick payback. Uh, it allows us to operate and focus on operations in the first six months of a startup of this expansion on the same footprint mm-hmm. in case there are any issues. You know, it's always good to have the working capital cushion. And this is the package that allowed it. And of course, in that, you know, the, the repayment terms are fantastic. And, and then most importantly, again, the equity friendly component uh, of not having to raise 30%, which would be about 50% of our market cap. Should be had yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, that's a huge Especially, I mean, producing 100,000 ounces at 2,000 gold, that would be about $200 million, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. And you guys would be making about uh, 50% of that. So you guys would be making your guys' market cap annually. Exactly. You know, obviously that's top line, deduct the taxes. Yeah, of course, of course. Education, but our, our free cash will be significantly close to where our market cap is. Yeah. Yeah, on an annual basis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And we've we've de-risked it, so we removed that equity overhang that you know investors you know assume that's going to happen. That okay, you know, project financing means there's a big equity raise, big mm-hmm. equity plug. And I think part of it of being a producer, established producer that's already produced over a hundred thousand ounces profitably and with high margin from the starter mine, the oxide mm-hmm. mine, case one, helps mm-hmm. certainly helps. And the fact that we still have a couple of years, not many, but as of now, a couple of years left on that mine life, some of that, that cash flow allows us to service that debt. As we draw down on it, we can service that debt from our own operations, which is, again, a big plus mm-hmm. uh, unique uh, situation that we have today uh, versus a lot of our peers, uh, which is obviously tough for everyone right now. Sure. So when do you when do you plan on starting? Uh, like, What would be the around a ballpark time when you would start start producing that 100,000 ounce for a full year? When do you think, what month or what what quarter do you think that will kick off? Yeah, so it is it is towards the second half of 2025. 
that's okay. currently what we're on track for. So let's just say it comes on in, in Q4 uh, 2025 to be conservative okay. here. So our first full year or four quarters would be, you know, the end of 2025 to the end of 2026, uh, sure. which we'll produce at a rate. We'll produce at 120,000 ounces for the first five years, uh, averaging 103,000 ounces gold equivalent for the 12 years mine life. Uh, to note, that's still expanding, right? Like we're, mm -hmm. we've already drilled underneath the current deposits that are in the feasibility study and the mine plan. We've hit uh, mineralization, so extensions or new discoveries. So, you know, just like we we, we took this project from a circa 1.2 million ounce resource with 210,000 mm -hmm. ounces to just over 2 million ounces of resources and 1.7 million ounces of reserves on a gold equivalent basis today, we still think there's a lot of room to grow. So I think uh, when this comes online in you know, the second half of 2025, it'll look a lot more better than a uh, just 12 year mine life at, at circa 100 for sure for sure so your your guys' model is to is to uh as you guys ramp up to 100,000 ounces a year you guys are going to continue to drill you guys are going to continue to explore and, and build out your global resources yeah exactly so one is actually on this mining license that we're operating today the ATO mining license uh we're we're really sitting on 10% of the deposit uh 10% oh, wow. of the mining so the deposit is sitting on 10%. So we've actually uh, initiated and started our first uh, shallow drill program across the other 90% of the mining license. So it's hundreds of holes from surface down to about six meters. So very shallow drilling. Wow, six meters only. Yeah, just to, just to see if we can find just more oxide. See. I see, I see. Six, six meters. So that, to see if we can uh, extend the oxide mine life. Because we have an operating oxide mine today that we've already paid for. That's producing. Yeah. If we find more oxides, then you know ultimately the 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 biggest win would have, would be if phase one and phase two are operating uh, in parallel for at least a few years, and then your production mm -hmm. profile is higher. You don't have mm -hmm. any infrastructure to build if you find more oxides on our property. Mm -hmm. So if we're successful, which we'll know in the next probably I guess couple quarters as we continue this program mm -hmm. and see if there's success there, that would be a massive win because it's it's not free, but it's 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 low hanging fruit for sure. You already have a plant where you find yeah. more oxides, keep them there. So that's our first program. Then as the cash flow kicks in, we will continue to grow the deposit at depth because that's still growing. All four deposits, ATO 1, 2, 4, and the Mung deposit are, mm -hmm. have only been drilled down to about 350, 400 meters and will continue and still continue at depth. But more importantly, the 90% the of, 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 of upside potentially optionality on our license that we could hopefully find more satellite deposits that have oxides and sulfides, just like we have already. Uh, across yeah, yeah. The so that's, that's where we're starting in terms of exploration on this property that we can self-fund from our own cash flow over the next few years, but main, mainly focus on bringing that cash flow online for mm -hmm. phase two. That funds the show. That funds the growth of our company through exploration and further development. So we have a second property in, in southwest of, of Mongolia, uh, the Udam Hundi license. That's mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's still kind of made in territory for us. We, we, we haven't done much work except for groundwork, IP, magnetic, soil sampling. Really good results at surface, but more importantly, uh, Erdine Resources has had a lot of success adjoining our licenses to the north and south. So we're in the right area, right district. And I think that could be another area to focus on in Mongolia. And then we obviously have, have banked an asset in Peru for another two and a half million ounces yes. of yeah. oxides and sulfides. So there's a lot of opportunity for growth. We, we, we have a unique mix of production, funded expansion, and can we fund our, can self fund our exploration across three properties for now two in Mongolia, mm -hmm. one in Peru. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll still offer the sizzle that any explore co can. can sure, sure. So Peru is the exact same model. You guys are, what you guys have done in Mongolia, you guys are trying to replicate it in Peru now. It's a similar approach, except for Peru that we obviously are going to wait until uh, phase two is up and running. So okay. it's more of a desktop work, try to advance the social permitting, uh, permitting, and mm -hmm. then as we 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 do a full uh, technical analysis of all the historical work on this project for the last 20 plus years, uh, see if there's any gaps that if we have to do any infill drilling before we put a feasibility study on the phase one. Mm -hmm. Except for the, Peru, the oxides uh, and leachable sulfides, so everything in phase one in Peru is three times the size of our phase one in Mongolia. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have over 600,000 ounces of leachable material. Uh, gives us, you know, a circa seven year mine life at about, you know, 75,000 plus ounces a year for the seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, robust economics uh, at 1700 all gold on a PA level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have after tax NPV at 5% of about 160 million US and a quarter awesome. billion US at 1900 all gold. Yeah, so a lot of, lot, it's, it was a, we banked this asset to focus on it, to build it in, in our pipeline. But one thing we're not going to do is build two mines at once. Mm -hmm. We want to, you know, de-risk the company 
and mm-hmm. be able to self fund our growth from our cash flow. Um, so that's that's it's it's basically a, you know it sequentially will be a project we'll focus on uh, in the coming years, but certainly not something we're going to be building while we're building phase two in Mongolia. People b- build companies, and you know you touched on this earlier at the beginning. Um, you know, Step Step Gold's management team is full of major players. Well, why don't you walk us through some of these local guys in Mongolia that are kind of you know spearheading the initiatives over there for you? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, starts obviously with our with our our founder, uh, co-founder Bata Tumar Osher, who's our chairman and CEO today, and uh, he's worked with, like I said earlier on, is with Matt Woods in two thousand nine. So he's he's fairly pl- he's very plugged in in the country. He's a local, which is important, and, and he's not just a a face as many companies have in other jurisdictions. Mm-hmm. He's he is the man that's running running the show in country and has relationships at all levels. Uh, locally, you know, so for the social side, that all the stuff we set up before we even started breaking ground, uh, to the governments, provincial and, and federal, uh, knows how to manage a, uh, obviously a local workforce, which is mm-hmm. huge. Uh, and of course, he's had success with with Matt um, uh, in 2011 when they sold Hunu Coal for half a billion cash. So there was wow. a track record of execution in country of building a company yeah, yeah, yeah. in a similar fashion. Uh, local, local, local workforce, and then a strategic came in, which is a, a Thai energy company at that time, uh, and bought and bought that. So there's track record of execution, navigating the jurisdiction, which is very important, uh, as one should do in any jurisdiction, not just Mongolia. As local, the more local you are, uh, the more support you'll get. No one's going to stop you from growing. Uh, and then of course Matt Wood, uh, who was uh, also the uh, founding uh, director, executive chairman of the company. Um, just actually uh, stepped down to, to director non-exec uh, just a few months ago, and and, and Bata was obviously promoted to to the chairman and CEO at that point. He was already CEO, but uh, Matt's an exploration geologist, Rio Tinto scholar, has mm-hmm. worked uh, worked all around the world, so has that really good experience of how to manage people, how to look at assets from a from an exploration side and, and, and a geologist and say, hey, this is a good asset that can grow. And that was his view the first time we reviewed it, saying, mm-hmm. this is not a million ounce deposit. This is going to be multi-million ounce. And we've shown that already very quickly. Uh, and he's had success globally uh, with a gold company in Armenia to a copper producer in Brazil that was also sold, I think, in 2018 mm-hmm. for 440 million as a producer to Oz, which is now part of BHP. So, you know, a huge, huge uh, experience and relevance in all this because not just Mongolia, but globally and his technical experience. Um, wow. Myself, you know, I was yeah. you know, one of the founding directors here in Canada and, and being part of the, the team since inception when we were trying to raise the money and negotiate the deal with Sentara and raise the money and help build the team. So we have, uh, I'm, I'm a finance guy in background. So, you know, I just, uh, you know, complimented uh, their, their, their set. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, we've obviously had a, have a few other locals uh, that have technical environmental experience uh, managing mm-hmm. hundreds of people. This is huge. Uh, Steve Haggerty from former Barrick Gold, heat bleach expert, world renowned cold weather heat bleach expert, mm-hmm. to Patrick Michaels in, in, in his uh, in Zurich, who, you know, him and his family are, are large investors and family office and multifamily office investors uh, that have been involved in our story privately uh, as, as a board member and even to, till today. So we put together a really good team to. To compliment. Yeah, I like that. So you got, you got, you got, you got, you got boots on the ground in Mongolia, and you got boots on the ground on Bay Street. That's kind of yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's it. Yeah, we have we have a we have a very uh, unique team here where we can manage all all that all that kind of stuff. And you know, credit to Matt. You know, when we were marketing this, you know, he's a geologist and technical, but he's capital market savvy as well. And you don't get to see that mix too often of guys who know how to discover, grow operate assets globally for sure for sure how to manage the capital market side and investor side of course Uh, there's two pieces all these companies uh there's two things there's the public company and then there's the actual asset they're two different companies right you got to be you have to have someone managing on the ground moving it forward someone's uh you know managing all the operations and you need someone on you know on the promoter side right to be managing the investors the stock and all that stuff right these are two different roles right and you guys you got the team, you got the assets. Now, now we're going into 2024, you know, gold starting to perk up. It, it keeps on flirting with 2000 and then it gets whacked down. Um, where do you see the gold market this, this fall of this coming up year? And, and how do you see, how do you see that impacting step gold? Yeah. So listen, I'm not in the forecasting business, but you know, everything 
for years has shown that gold should be higher. We're seeing central bank buying a record. I think that's a leading indicator. The buying in the East, huge uh, indication. That's why we're actually dual listing in, in, in Hong Kong. So I think that the first thing to talk about gold in the market is regardless of the, of the gold price, we have, a, we have a sustainable business for now 14 years ahead of us that's going to continue to grow that doesn't need a higher gold price. We can make a, a circa you know, $800 to $1,000 margin at today's pricing. Mm -hmm. The market needs a higher gold price. But what we, you know, we're always a dynamic team. We've gone through a lot of hurdles, including COVID and, and wars and everything else, and just raising money from Mongolia, which you know, wasn't easy, is that you know, we're, we're looking to do a list in Hong Kong in 2024. So that's something we were actually ready for this month. We pushed it because of market conditions. Uh, our share price should be much higher uh, as it was a few years ago. And, and luckily, we don't have to raise equity today to get back to a price of that. You know, we've de-risked it and we have production mm -hmm. today. We have that uh, the project financing facility. So as the price recovers back to uh, more acceptable levels, which is you know multiples of today, we'll do a list in Hong Kong. And that's, I think, is going to create a big, be a major catalyst for our company in mm -hmm. a strong gold market, you know, where we are holding holding strong in, in the gold price. And I think it will move up at some point. Just very similar to 2020, where other asset classes, including gold, all sold off, but gold rebounded first and hit new highs. Mm -hmm. uh, where gold has performed, is actually still a best asset before. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it is. It, it, during this time, but yeah. it should be much higher with a, with the debt. And now we have yeah. interest rates have increased and gold has actually held its own against interest rates, which is now kind of decoupled from where it used to be. It used uh, to be yeah. moving the opposite. So I think all those factors allow for gold to be kind of top of topical to a lot of people, given the wars, the safety, the debt, it interest rates paused or going down. Mm -hmm. uh, all that I think uh, people are, will start realizing what gold has already done and shown is it is a storage of value. It is a currency. So I think it's going to be more uh, liked, well liked by generalist investors. And that will eventually push the price up and that will push the equities up. Uh, yeah. So for us, we're excited about that because we're in the business. We have ounces in the ground. We trade very cheaply on all our ounces in the ground as a producer and have funded expansion. So we're very excited about that. Something like the Hong Kong listing is an active market. Mm -hmm. uh, culturally, precious metals don't need to uh, educate people. Yeah. Uh, for the last years, it's, it's in our blood. We're you know, even Indians and, and, yeah. and, of course, the Chinese. So there's a huge market there. There's only six other precious metals companies that trade in Hong Kong. So we'll have a dual listing, main board, Toronto Stock Exchange, where we're obviously hundred one of hundreds of companies uh, on the main board, but we're only one of seven if we, when we list there in, in Q2. Mm -hmm. And their valuations are robust and liquidity is robust. So I think we're going to show very well. And that'll be mm -hmm. a major catalyst in addition to everything else, which is uh, phase two uh, updates on, on draws and progress on construction, mm -hmm. uh, the normal steady eddy production updates. And then maybe in between that, we get some expiration surprises uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, on, on, on extensions of phase one, which I think will be well received because that's a, that's, that's uh, almost more ounces months. coming in. It's free ounces. Exactly. 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 Well, that's great. That's great. Well, thanks so much, Anil, for, for taking the time and coming on today and, and sharing your insights. Uh, quite quite appreciated. And for everyone that's watching, please refer down to Step Gold's website. I'll I'll link it in the bio. Um, and if you have any any questions, I'll uh, I'll also put uh, Neil's email down there below. So if you want to reach out, you can send him an email. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Anil. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Anil. Thanks. Bye.